So it's been a little while since I've done an affordable vintage video and I like to do those from time to time because I also collect vintage watches and today I have two really awesome vintage watches that are at two different price points. Both of them I would say are affordable for what they are. One is especially affordable and one is not so affordable but it's just a really cool watch and is still affordable when compared to what it actually is. So this is a Waltham Bathyscoff. This was made by Blancpain. They actually made this exact watch in their lineup and it was a Bathyscoff by Blancpain and this is a private label version for Waltham. These are actually really nicely sized at 37 millimeters. You get a 47 millimeter lug to lug. It's like 47, 46 and a half millimeters lug to lug. So it actually wears larger than 37 millimeters. You have an 11.6 millimeter thickness. You get an acrylic crystal, just a beautiful, beautiful watch. And the entire watch is made by Blancpain. So that's the case, the dial, the bezel, the crown, the movement, everything. So the movement actually is an A Shields movement, but that's the exact same movement that was used in the other watches during that time. Uh, many other watch brands, many other watch companies use that exact same movement. So uh, that's what's used in here, and that's what was used in the Bathyscoff for Blancpain and, and a couple of other 50 Fathoms as well. So technically, this is a 50 Fathoms. It actually says the word Bathyscoff on the dial. Uh, and the dial is awesome on this watch. This has a silver dial. It's sort of curved. You have applied indices, silver hands, a little red tip on the second hand, a red date there. It hand winds really nicely. Sounds really, really good actually. And you get a Bakelite bezel, which is awesome. Uh, and I actually learned recently that Bakelite bezels aren't called Bakelite because they're actually baked plastic or something like that. It's the form of plastic prior to plastic actually being available. And it was invented by a man named Bakeland. So this is actually uh, a Bakelite bezel, which is not plastic. It's made out of Bakelite and they named Bakelite after the person who actually invented it. And that was uh, a man named Bakeland. So pretty cool. Uh, and this is just a really beautiful watch a really beautiful bezel. I put this on a really cheap eBay special right here. This was 19 bucks on eBay. You have a little bit of micro adjust, actually a lot of micro adjust, um, solid links, 19 bucks. You can't go wrong. It has uh, a little bit of a, a little, you know, crease in the actual uh, buckle itself. Very comfortable, um, but fits the watch. It's actually a little jangly. It works really, really well. Uh, it looks great on my wrist. We'll do a wrist shot in just a moment. Now, the other watch that I have here is actually very, very similar, eerily similar to this watch right here. This is a watch that was actually private label for Sears and Roebuck. So this was an American sold watch, but it was Swiss made. This gets a Bakelite bezel that is eerily similar to the Waltham. These were around the same time period as well. Uh, the case is actually very similar as well. Uh, a little bit thicker lugs on here, but the case profiles are very, very similar. The bezels are not as similar, but the Bakelite uh, inserts are, as I mentioned. You do get uh, acrylic crystals on both of them. This one's slightly more dome, but this could be just because it's been replaced on here. I I'm not sure, because this one's in really good condition. I would imagine it was replaced or repaired at some point. Uh, crowns are kind of similar. Both have the same movement. So this gets an a shields movement, the same exact movement, 17 joules, that is in this watch as well. It is also 37 millimeters. It also has a 47 millimeter lug width. It is also 11.6 millimeters thick or just about the same. They have almost the same lug width. So that's where they're a little bit different, but very, very close. Uh, I believe this has a 19 millimeter lug width. The other watch has an 18 millimeter lug width. And you can see the case profiles, very, very similar. Uh, the only difference is the case back on here, uh, this is actually the case backs are almost similar as well. Uh, pretty damn close, if almost makes no difference. I'll do close-ups of it. Um, but the case back on this one might be a replaced case back, the one on the Sears, because it actually says um, uh, deep diver on it. And I don't know if this was actually called a deep diver and then it says 666 feet or 20 atmospheres. So I don't know if this was actually replaced 
kind of weird. This could be a replacement and it kind of gives me a clue. So what I wanted to bring up about this watch, I'll bring up the price first. I paid 200 bucks for this watch and then I got it. There was a couple of things that weren't as described. One of them is actually uh, some of the teeth that actually uh, are used to set the time on the one of the wheels is definitely been stripped. Uh, I emptied the teeth out of the actual case back when I got the watch. The watch works and tells time perfectly. However, it's very, very hard to wind the watch. It doesn't sound good, very scratchy. Number one, it does not sound like uh, the other watch that we just listened to, it sounds beautiful. Uh, and number two, the uh, the actual setting of the time is really, really crunchy. And I'm actually not going to do that because I don't want to destroy it further. Uh, and then the bezel is also locked. So I could definitely get this loosened up if I wanted to. Uh, I could probably just clean it out. I just haven't gotten around to do it. But this was 200 bucks in this condition. And then I, I complained and they gave me, I think, about 80 bucks back. So I paid about $120 for this watch. So this is the thing about this watch. I don't know who actually made it. It has a lot of similarities to this Blancpain made uh, Waltham. However, I don't know exactly who made this. There's not a lot of information out there either. Sears, in general, sold a few different watches labeled with this tradition name. One of them was a chronograph, and a few of them actually were a chronograph, and those were made by Hoyer. So uh, they're actually referred to as the poor man's Hoyer sometimes, but they were actually Hoyers. They were cases, movements, the whole entire watch was made, produced by Hoyer and with the label tradition on the dial. Now, I don't think Hoyer actually made their dive watches, but I can't find a lot of information on whether they did or not. But I do know that it was made by a major Swiss brand. It could have been Blancpain, it could have been Bulova, or it could have been Hoyer. It could have been one of many different brands. But this is definitely a sleeper, in my opinion. It's an awesome skin diver. Uh, both of these are technically skin divers, I would say. I don't know if the case back is original on here, but everything else I think is original. Uh, and this one pretty much is 100% original, obviously, except for the bracelet and the bracelet on here. The bracelet on here is just a Straps Co., uh, just a mesh bracelet that I threw on here that fit it pretty perfectly. Uh, and I think looks really, really good on here. Uh, but very quickly, let me show you the watch that I'm wearing on my wrist. Then we're gonna just do a quick wrist shot and then we'll do a quick loom shot and wrap up the video. But the loom is terrible on these watches. Obviously, they're really old. I think the Waltham might have been reloomed, but we'll double check that. Uh, I haven't checked that out in a while, but you can see most of the loom is gone on this watch. Uh, and this watch has loom, but uh, it, it's really patinaed. I don't know if it actually still uh, glows at all, but we'll do a very, very quick loom shot. But before we do, today I am wearing an enormous dive watch, especially when compared to these 37 millimeter watches. Uh, this is my JLC Navy Seals Master Compressor Extreme uh, GMT. It's just that a lot of watch, it has a lot of name to it, uh, obviously, so uh, just a really cool watch, really, really robust uh, titanium, grade five titanium case, actually very hard to scratch. Very heavy, even though it's made out of titanium and has a ceramic bezel. Uh, just a really underrated dive watch, one of the coolest too. Uh, just an enormous watch too, it's like 46 millimeters. But here is the Waltham on my wrist, on that bracelet. Oh, it's just awesome. Look at that. How good does that look? I think this watch looks absolutely amazing. Uh, as vintage watches go, this cost uh, around $2,000. If you wanted this in mint, mint condition, you can get them for around $2,500 to $3,000. Uh, if you wanted the Blancpain version of this, the, the Bathyscaf directly from uh, with the name uh, Blancpain on the actual dial, they go for around nine to eleven, twelve thousand dollars, depending on the condition. So, obviously, a huge savings for the exact same watch with a different name on it. And you know what? This is an American watch company. I think it's really cool. Uh, I really love it. I'm super proud to own it, and I think they're going to be worth more than they are today. Uh, but even if they're not, I don't care. It's something that I've always wanted. Uh, and I'm super proud to own it. And I just like the idea that it is a uh, private label watch. I like the idea that it was made by a company that no one would know uh, was an amazing watch company back then. And now 
Uh, obviously, the same exact watch is worth a lot more money with just a different name on it. It's kind of weird, but I like that. And then speaking of just a cool watch, this is just a cool looking watch as well. Uh, another awesome skin diver from the exact same period that you can get for under $200. It literally is made the exact same way as the $2,000 watch that I just showed you. Uh, it has the same movement. It basically has the same bezel. Uh, very similar sort of dome dial, curved dial, and you have a date at three o'clock. Uh, these in mint condition, you can get these for around $300, $400. Uh, in this condition, you can get them for around $100, $120. Uh, I am always on the uh, lookout for another one. I want to have another one that's in better condition than this one. I'm never going to restore it. So um, I do wear these from time to time, but it's part of my vintage collection. I just love these watches. I love skin divers. I love the look of them. Uh, I just think they're cool as all hell. But really quickly, really, really quickly, uh, a very quick loom shot, and then we're gonna wrap up the video. So these are definitely both reloomed at some point in their lifetime. However, I think that was a while ago. As you can see, the loom is pretty much faded immediately, except on the Waltham, which is carrying on just a little bit longer, but nothing, nothing near uh, what it should be if it was reloomed recently. So I think these were probably reloomed maybe 10, 20, 30 years ago. And uh, this is what it, you know, it's pretty much gone already. But um, these are awesome watches. There are plenty of uh, private label watches out there. For some reason, I kind of like that idea of a private label watch. Um, and I really love these watches. These are two of my favorite watches in my collection, especially in my vintage collection. Uh, I just think they're really, really awesome. But tell me what you guys think in the comments below. I wanna hear from you guys. Uh, I know I love these watches. Tell me what you guys think. If you know anything about the, uh, the uh, Sears and Roebuck uh, tradition, please add a comment below. I wanna hear what you guys uh, know about it because I'm really interested to finding out uh, and finding out more information on these watches um, because there isn't a lot of information out there on who actually manufactured them. But uh, like I said, if you do have anything, please add a comment below. Please also don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that bell icon. It's super helpful for the channel and I very much appreciate it. Anyway, thank you for logging on. I'll catch you guys in the next video.